Right now at four, a campaign jab against then-candidate Donald Trump has now made it all the way to the Supreme Court. At issue is whether the phrase Trump too small can be trademarked. And joining us now to explain all this for us is our Queen City, uh, Queen City News legal expert, Khalif Rhodes. All right, Khalif, so how did we get here? You got to look back to 2016. Wow. I mean, this is very interesting. You got Mark Rubio at the time, former President Trump, then candidate Trump was calling him Little Marco. And so he took issue with that. And at a, a rally, he said, well, yeah, he may be taller than me, but I'm, you know, he's 6'2". But why does he have hands that are the size of someone that's 5'2"? Then he paused. You know, he says, well, the, the, the crowd, you know what they say with people that have small hands? The crowd erupts in laughter. And he says, well, you can't trust them. That prompted the individual to file a trademark application. That trade application was denied. U.S. Patent Office said you can't do that. And so then the guy took it to the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals said, well, actually, he can do that. And so then now they've taken it up to the Supreme Court and they've granted cert. And so that's why we're here today. You know, you, you mentioned grant cert. What is that also? But uh, what we see out of this, too, is that we see a lot of this in the politics now. Is mm -hmm. This is bully politics. It's making fun of people. Now it's so much mainstream. But also trademarking now in the grant cert process? Well, the trademark process for sure was a money grab. That individual saw that, hey, this, this caught the crowd. The crowd responded. I got an opportunity to put this on a T-shirt. I'm going to run and do it. In regards to the cert process, that's the legal term. Mm -hmm. um, any application that, that wants to go before the Supreme Court, everyone has to write a petition for a cert, which is a, a sir, sure, sorori. That say, try to say that twice if you want to. And I, I, I'll <laughs> leave it to you. Yeah, right. you can do that. <laughs> and, so, and so you have to put that application in, and you have these clerks that will then at that point run and say, well, listen, are these applications something that we can look at? and the court will decide if they'll hear the case. And in this case, the court has decided, yes, we'll hear the case. And, and why is this significant? Well, this case is significant for, I think, two points. The first thing you gotta look at is, you got, obviously, it's election season. So you have President Trump and former, former President Trump and President Biden, and they're looking and they're saying, you know what, um, the Biden administration is the one that actually filed this to go to the Supreme Court. And so President Trump is standing there, and who comes to his defense? his opponent that he'll be looking at in the next few months. Hmm. So I think for sure this is one where it has intrigue. And then on the other point, it's a First Amendment issue. And so they have 8,000 petitions that are sent to them every year. They only hear 80 of them. That's 1%. Wow. They only hear unique cases that have intrigue, and they want to make a standing and a point to make sure that folks understand what the Constitution actually says. Certainly unique yeah. with intrigue. Exactly. Yeah. And to think we're not even into 2024 yet. <laughs> Khalif Rhodes, our Chief Queen City News Chief Legal Analyst, uh, here once again with all of his knowledge. Thanks.